death loop. <sighs> Here we go. Welcome to the first Ultraviolet review, where we take a critical look at the games we play and give them a harsh but deserved ranking. We'll keep things fairly spoiler light, but that doesn't mean no spoilers. Now, Deathloop is a bit of an odd game. It has a psychedelic 1960s inspired setting, enhanced by some serious quasi-magical science. It gives me vaguely Bioshock vibes, although not as damn spooky. You're trapped in a 24-hour time loop, and the only way to break it is by killing the eight visionaries that brought it together in the first place. The player character Colt is experiencing amnesia, but there is evidence that he has been trying to break the loop for some time. He's the only one on the island to retain his memories between each loop, save for his main rival Juliana, who tries to stop Colt from achieving his goals at every turn. At the end of every loop, you lose most of the abilities and equipment you gain along the way but you keep all the information you collect. Which makes this game feel a lot like a roguelite, even though it technically isn't because there isn't any procedural generation, so it's more like a rogue slim or a rogue almost. This is the latest game from Arcane Studios, who brought us Prey in the Dishonored games, and you can definitely feel it in the gameplay. Although Deathloop is a little more... flexible. You've probably seen the 9 and 10 out of 10 ratings coming in for this game, but those feel pretty inflated to me. This game has some great qualities, but it also misses the mark in a number of places. The plot for this game is simple and straightforward, and the first few hours of the game, that also double for the tutorial, do a good job of introducing you to the enigma that is Black Reef, and our main two characters Colt and Juliana. But after that, we're thrown into the world with little other exposition. The rest of the story is by and large given to us in small chunks of dialogue through recordings, or on notes left lying around. Going into the game, I kind of expected to have interactions with the other visionaries, interesting pieces of dialogue to flesh out those characters and Colt's relationship with them, not unlike we get between Colt and Juliana when we enter an area. Sadly, the visionaries act more like glorified NPCs, slightly more health, and some of them have an ability you can steal, but that's about it. They're left feeling more like two-dimensional character tropes than real fleshed out characters. The game is also a lot more linear than I thought it would be. I thought we'd have to pick out our own order for ending each of the visionaries, finding out the times they're available and building the puzzle ourselves, but instead the game kind of railroads you to a single loop ending, which might also be why it only took about 20 hours to complete. Now on the other hand, what we get with Juliana is actually quite good, not to mention Colt's dialogue throughout the game. Their lines are very well voice acted. It not only feels well written and authentic, but also it's actually funny. Hey Colt, what you doing? Breathe. Sure, but you've never written any. Everything I ever wanted is here. An important role. Time for interests. Family. What family? I have a life worth remembering in here. <laughs> this isn't life. We're running in circles, killing time. Why did they let you into Eon? I'm filthy rich. You see my house. Come on, you're ducking me. Really? How'd you do it? A series of impossible tests created by Wenji and Igor. I was the only one who passed. So you cheated? No. I had actual qualifications. Unlike you, whose only reason for being here was because you survived a botched experiment. Laos Wart. Guardilu? What the fuck is a Guardilu? Electron? Test flight. I iteration? Tenderloin. Deity. Uh, smelter. Black light? Suppository? The conclusion of the game, however, left me wanting more. I won't go into details about it, but I was hoping the ending would reflect the thorough opening sequence with Juliana. This game was overall missing some boss battles, but maybe that's just the nature of it being a stealth game. Despite the story being somewhat lackluster, the gameplay is fun, if a little shallow. The main focus and the main reason you should play this game is for the stealth and combat. It definitely has the same feel as Dishonored, but Deathloop has a little more freedom and rewards aggressive, guns blazing gameplay just as much as the stealthy approach. Enemies deal quite a bit of damage, but you deal even more. Basically every gun in the game kills NPCs in one headshot, save for visionaries, which helps make the stealth feel rewarding and encounters feel balanced even somewhat realistic for a game filled with science-y magic. The NPCs though are the definition of brain dead. I feel like not enough people have been talking about this, especially since that was one of the main gripes people had for cyberpunk, but it feels equally as bad here. You can kill an enemy standing right beside someone else, and they won't be alerted unless they are looking directly 
directly at them. And you can often approach enemies and kill them before they even realize who you are, despite the fact the entire island of Black Reef is ordered to kill you on sight. Also, they have the complete inability to look up. It doesn't matter what you use, if you're above an enemy on a rooftop or something, you might as well be invisible. I mean, if they were too smart, the high damage that everything does to you would probably be very annoying, but they just feel a little too dumb. The gunplay does feel good though. The different weapons feel unique and satisfying to use. The sights on some of them are a bit awkward at times. I really wanted to like the 4 pounder pistol, but I found aiming it quite difficult, whereas the Limp 10 SMG and Tribunal pistol had clearer sights and were deadly accurate. I spent a large portion of the game using a version of the Limp 10 with a silence perk for stealth kills, and it felt a little wrong to use that kind of weapon for that kind of stealth play. A few weapons also seem to have a distinct disadvantage based on the sounds they make. Loud weapons like the 4-pounder, rapier rifle, and even the one sniper rifle in the game made so much goddamn noise that you couldn't kill someone without alerting the whole area. Also, I didn't like that the gun perks worked more like a looter shooter, where you mostly had to get lucky that a weapon would drop with the perk you want, instead of making things like silencers, scopes, and ammo types interchangeable options like the trinkets. There was also only 4 legendary weapons, which didn't feel like a lot. We haven't touched on the slabs yet, which are the powers you pick up from the visionaries you kill. Most of them are a lot of fun. I found the damage boosting slab Havoc unnecessary since you do so much damage anyway. On the other hand, I never went anywhere without Blink, because it was so vital for traversal and some of the puzzles in the game. I ended up using Aether as my other main slab ability. Going invisible just goes hand in hand with stealth, and it lets you manipulate the already brain dead NPCs even more, as well as hack equipment without being detected by the sensors. Carnesis the telekinetic slab and Nexus the enemy linking slab were both fun to use, but Blink and Aether felt so necessary that I didn't end up using them very much. In a way, slabs felt limited by the fact that we can only equip two at a time. I was also disappointed with the lack of upgrades or different options for the grenades and machete. The machete was fun to use, and the personal trinket Bloodthirsty Brawler, which heals you when dealing melee damage, made it very safe to run through a group of enemies with the blade brandished. It just might have been fun to try the same thing with a metal bat, a crowbar, or a hatchet of some kind. I tended not to use the grenades much, so it ended up being a wasted slot for me. I think the controls for the game overall could have used a bit of tweaking to be more optimized. Like a dedicated button for the hackamajig, so you aren't constantly switching between it and your slabs. There are a few puzzles in the game, none of them were particularly interesting, but it was a decent change from the normal combat loop. Aside from the battery based puzzles, I fucking hated those things. I can't tell you how many times I would have to scour the area first to find the batteries, which blend into the environment a little too well if you ask me, and then you have to find a charging station only to accidentally drop it somewhere or destroy it through combat or because of some stray mine. I fucking hate the batteries. Why do we have to hold it in the gun hand? You can't strap that thing to your belt cool? I felt like the game's four maps, the Complex, Updom, Carl's Bay, and Fristad Rock were all rather well designed. They feel like a good size, not so big that you can get easily lost, and not so small that you feel like there's nowhere to go. And the differences based on the time of day help keep things fresh. There are a lot of different paths connecting all the areas in each map, so you can quickly move to one section from another without having to run through the whole area. Near the end of my playthrough I was starting to get sick of them, but soon after after that I ended the loop, so it wasn't a huge problem. There are multiple avenues to traverse each area and overcome the hurdles that each one puts in front of you. I died a lot going to Fristed Rock my first few times because of the slab nullifying class pass, but it was a good challenge to overcome. Oh loot. This game is a lot like a looter shooter in the way that it drops weapons and trinkets. Aside from the few visionary specific pieces, most of it is random chance, so you may not see the same weapons between different playthroughs. There is just enough diversity with the weapons that there should be something for everyone, but it isn't over encumbered. Similarly with the trinkets, there are a few varieties, but a handful of them are clear winners for particular playstyles. However, you start the game with a double jump trinket, which basically makes your 4 slot personal trinket system only a 3 slot one, because it feels like a necessary part of the game. I literally never took it off. The only real problem with the loot is the menuing. It can start to get cluttered at the end of each day cycle, and it isn't often clear what items are already attached to guns or what you have duplicates of. Like, bitch, you want me to remember my whole inventory while also piecing together this puzzling narrative? Fuck you. I think items that are equipped need a better indicator and need to appear at the bottom of the list. Similarly, items that you've picked up but haven't made a permanent part of your inventory need to be a little more clear than the small symbol at the top left of each one that I know I barely looked at. Speaking of permanent inventory, this is the most roguelite aspect of the game. If the day ends or you die, then you lose the abilities and equipment you've gathered, unless you infuse it with residuum. You collect residuum either by killing visionaries or absorbing it from random objects throughout the map. 
You can also sacrifice equipment in your inventory in exchange for a residuum. I found that typically I had more than enough to infuse the items I wanted, which makes them stick around for the rest of your playthrough, so it was never much of a concern. You get a chance to infuse things when you finish a day, but if you die then you lose everything, so I recommend infusing something you want as soon as possible and not dying before then. We can't talk about the gameplay without mentioning the weird multiplayer. When you're in an area that also has a visionary, Juliana can invade your game. This locks the escape tunnels until you can hack an antenna, while in the meantime Juliana tries to hunt you down and kill you. By default you're connected to random matchmaking and another player enters the game as Juliana to duke it out with. Now, I turned this option off because I didn't want some random coming in and fucking my shit up while I was on some important mission, but the concept is interesting and unique. The problem is that the game doesn't feel very balanced for this. You both have so little health and Colt has 3 lives to Juliana's 1. It just feels kind of skewed, and the slabs are so powerful that things are over quickly. It usually comes down to who sees who first. I spent a little time playing as Juliana, there's a whole upgrading system for unlocking weapons, trinkets, and slabs for her, as well as some cosmetic costume stuff. This game doesn't really have any endgame content though outside of that, so I don't see matchmaking working out very well in the next few months when most early players have finished playing the game. There just isn't much incentive to keep going. The difficulty for this game is a bit hard to describe. You die quickly, but so do the enemies. For the most part it is fairly easy, but if you find yourself in a bad situation, you die real quick. I rarely died enough for a loop reset, but it did happen a small number of times. Unfortunately, there are no difficulty settings for this game, which is a trope I'm a bit tired of. I'm all for an intended difficulty, but games at least need an easy setting so that people aren't prevented from enjoying it just because they might not be good at gaming. Not to mention it should be there for an accessibility option for someone with an impairment. Gatekeeping games with a necessary skill requirement is just shitty, especially ones that have more of a narrow of focus. You can give yourself more of a challenge by not using certain weapons or powers. I would recommend banning yourself from Ether and Blink if you're looking for something like that, but I think all games should at least have an easy mode. I feel like I've been rather negative about the game so far, so let me say that the game is fun. The gameplay feels good, the guns are satisfying to use, the slabs are cool and have a bit of customization to keep them interesting. It isn't all bad, but I think there is a lot to nitpick about. The story is really kind of lacking, and I don't see much reason to keep playing the game after finishing your first playthrough. Now in terms of graphics, the game looks good, but it is about average of what I would expect for this generation of gaming. Nothing is over the top stunning or anything, but overall, it looks good. I played it on PC, and there were some problems. The game requires a weird amount of CPU and GPU usage, so to record the game I had to turn the visual settings down by a pretty large margin to stop my GPU from overheating, and a lot of my recordings ended up getting ruined because of this, coming out extremely stuttery. I didn't notice a huge visual difference when I did turn the settings down, which was nice. But it was weird that I had to. I have an AMD Ryzen 7 1700 core processor and a 2070 Super Nvidia card, so I shouldn't have had a huge struggle. But I think the recording pushed me over the edge. Again, I didn't think there was a noticeable downgrade in the graphics when I lowered the game settings, so I think that's a plus, and I recommend doing the same if you're struggling. The game is also basically bug free. Very occasionally, an NPC would clip into an object, and one time Juliana felt nigh unkillable. But like, three incidents in 20 hours of gaming time is a lot more than I can say for most AAA games these days. And from what I understand, the performance on PS5 is actually better. I will say that most of my loading screens were pretty long. You only have to load between areas. Once you're in one, there is no loading. But you're doing four areas every loop, and probably multiple loops in a session, so it can add up. It seems especially bad for playing as Juliana. You die once, then you need to rematch make and load in again. It seems rough to me. Maybe a higher end PC wouldn't have as much of a problem, and I don't know what it's like on PS5. I found Deathloop overall fun to play, but lacking in a lot of areas. For an overall rating, I'd give it a 6 out of 10. It is fun, but it's not capital G good. If you are thinking about picking up the game, I'd wait for a sale or for the price to go down. I wouldn't pay more than about $40 for this game, and even that's a bit steep for a 20 hour game. I like to get about half an hour of game time for each dollar I spend, and I paid about $80 for Deathloop, so 20 hours just doesn't quite cut it. $40 or less though, I think that makes the game worth picking up. If you're really invested in the Juliana gameplay, then maybe you could add an extra point to the score. It isn't really for me, but if you enjoy ruining people's days, then power to you, I guess. This has been my rather complainy and cynical opinion. If you agree with me, give the video a like and comment below why or why you might think I'm dead fucking wrong. I happily invite the discussion, but consider subscribing either way for more content. Until the next time. Carnesis. <laughs> Good, strong start. <laughs>